screen to calculate the assets and liabilities of the fund with a view to setting contribution rates for employers, which come into effect from April 17 for the next three years. Clearly, at the time of heightened financial pressure, um, a number of employees are facing very difficult financial situations, and we're very aware of that. Yvonne and I have had a number of meetings with the Moses Life Directors of Finance, uh, and there'll be further consultation with employers before those contribution rates are set. Uh, from 2.6 Process. For the last two months, um, the fund has been collecting information from employers, which we provided to our factory this morning, and that provides him with a great deal of information on which to base his calculations. Also, a great deal of work in actually cleaning up that data and making sure um, it's as up to date as possible. Section 2.13 through to 2.16 refers to guaranteed minimum pensions. Uh, on the 1st of March, the Treasury announced their decision um, in relation to GMPs payable on those members who reached stage pension age between the 6th of April 16 and the 5th of December 2018. Uh, the effect of making the pension fund responsible for those payments is a cost across the OGPS of about two hundred. Members are asked to, to note the report. Thank you, Chair. 
work in one of those three polls, then Thomas Manners have made changes since the polls in January. They are summary new charges are now included. Their party payments are higher than that projected in January, and the actual new charges are lower than estimated. The finalised budget for 1617 is 19.2 million. Section 2.3 of this report highlights to members the variances from that reported in January. Stephen now reflects salary recharges. Central establishment recharges have been updated and investment performance measurement fees and a budget allocation for costs associated with pooling have been updated, all to reflect more up to date information. Section 2.4 to 2.6 of this report details the three year budget of the MPF for inclusion in the 1516 annual report. As previously reported, census best practice for the contents of the financial performance report includes a three year budget. Approval is sought to include the three year budget in this year's annual report, although annual budgets will still be brought to this pensions committee for approval. Section 7 of this report explains the costs of the pension fund are charged directly to the pension fund and then ultimately be covered by investment income and employee and employer contributions. This report recommends in section 12 that members note the actual outcome 1516 and approve the finalised budget for 1617 and also approve the inclusion of the three years in the 2015 annual report. The approval of this budget forms part of the government's arrangements of Merseyside Pension Fund. was rectified the first working day back with no financial disadvantage to the fund. Section 13 asks the members of the Pensions Committee to agree the Treasury Management Annual Report for 2015-16. The reason for the recommendation, as detailed in Section 14, if the Treasury Management Code requires public sector authorities to determine an annual Treasury Management Strategy, and within that strategy there is a requirement to formally report after the year on to those charges.
which was a, an outperformance of 1.6%. On Section 2.2, we give some detail of economic events over the preceding 12 months. Most equity markets were down, with the exception of North America. Bonds um, had a small positive return during the 12 months. Under Section 2.3, we show the thumbs performance over one, three, and five years um, against both our benchmark and against inflation and average earnings, which are all uh, useful benchmarks to consider our performance against. Section 8, just confirm what the performance was, um, and section, section 13, members are asked to note the report. And as we said, section 14, the performance of the fund relative to its benchmark is a key indicator of successful implementation of the fund's investment strategy. Thank you, Chair. Any questions? Chair, I think we perhaps could add to the recommendation and congratulations to the office. Lifetime Savings Association annual conference. It's over three days in Liverpool. Details of the event <coughs> in the agenda. It is a mixture of public and private pensions, so it does provide a very broad overview of, of the pensions world. Certain sessions may be more relevant to members than others. As we spoke, it is possible just to attend for one day uh, rather than necessarily having to attend all three days. Uh, as we're members of PLSA attendance is complimentary, but if members are registered and they don't attend the conference, then the charge is made to the fund. So, uh, it, it, so the recommendation is again that members uh, consider and determine the number of, and allocation of places. But if you do put your name down, uh, please bear in mind there is a list of the fund if you don't turn it.
this is in Bournemouth uh, from the 7th to the 9th of December. detail the, uh, the areas that our submission needs to cover. We had hoped to uh, have a submission prepared in draft form for this meeting. Um, we only got feedback from Treasury uh, Thursday last week. So that following the meeting the, the chair and I had with the chair and officers of the other two funds. So in relation to the recommendations, members are asked to note and the officers are preparing the final submission and then I will seek to change recommendation 13.2 so that members approve that the, the chair uh, in consultation with officers prepare and submit a consultation for the 15th of July. The exempt appendix which is a, the presentation we made to Treasury and DCLG on the 16th of June gives um, members a bit of information about the, the proposal that
schedule 12 days amended to the act.